Hi there, in this video we're going to go through the fetch execute cycle. Now, I've got another instance of the top level, okay? Now, in this one we're going to be using the instruction address register and the instruction register, and we're going to be using the RAM as well. So, the way it's set up at the moment is that we can put a value into the RAM, okay? So, for example, I've set it up so we can putting uh, all ones in there. In fact, I'll, I'll reset the simulation back to the beginning. Okay, so that's the beginning. So we'll set it up so that, say we put all ones into the RAM. Okay, so this will go to every RAM element, but of course, it'll only actually get into the one that's been chosen, chosen, and the one that's been chosen well, with the one that's chosen via this instruction address register. Now, you notice I've tied this here to one. Now, again, this is me having to fix things because of the kind of uh, the way things are working with Logisim. If I were to take this here, okay, and just to explain it to you, if I was to take this here and tie it to this control unit okay and I was to then simulate reset the simulation now you'll notice that everything goes red now everything goes red because at the beginning of this process the instruction address register now that holds the address of the instruction that you want to go and execute that instruction address register is the value of it is placed on to the bus because it's been enabled it's been enabled onto the bus but the value in it is undefined okay the value in it's undefined here because we're sitting in race conditions here okay so the whole thing here has to be reset in order for it to get it to work properly now in a previous video when I showed the final version of the CPU I had a reset built in but at the point I'd built this I didn't have the reset at that time okay so um, I was in order to get through these simulations I was having to nobble it a bit in order to to get it to work okay so that's the reason why I've set this to one okay now when I set this to one Oh, there we go. When I set this to 1, okay, you'll notice the values here will go to 0. Now, the reason why they're all going to 0, and this is what I had to mess about in order to, to get it to work properly, the simulation work properly, that is, is that the, the pins, the output pins, um, when you look at the attribute and the output pin, it gives you an option, pull behaviour. And I set all the, the output pins to the pull behaviour as pull down. So I've, I've, I set basically out all the outputs and all the inputs and every other element of every other pin really in this entire um, CPU. I set it to pull down behaviour as pull behaviour as pull down. So what it means is that if it doesn't know what a value is, if it's not a 0 or a 1, and it has no, no knowledge of the value, then it assumes the value is a zero, okay? So that means that by setting this set to one, and all the pins, so that output pin there, pull down zero, then it forces all of the values here to be zero, okay? So that means we're able then to say that the value in the instruction address register, okay, is zero, okay. So that means we've, in effect, we're, we're enabling the value from the instruction address register onto the, the bus, and that value is zero. So all of the the bus is actually sitting at zero, which is good because that's what we want. Because instruction address register holds the address of the first instruction that we want to go and fetch okay so now let's again and have a wee look in the control section so 
So you can see the control section is wired differently from the previous section. Okay. Now, what we're going to do here first of all is you'll notice that at start off, this line here, bus one is high. Okay. Now the reason for that bus one being high is this bus one goes into this little element here, which I haven't really talked about. But if you have a look in there, normally this would be passing through here, okay? But this little element here, this it ensures that whenever bus one goes high, all these values go low. So this will not connect to there, okay? So we won't get that normal flow of data through there. But what we will do is we'll get a value of 1 placed on the bus. So you can see that value of 1. Okay. Now the reason for putting the value of 1 on there is that the 1 passes straight through here. The operation codes here are set in the addition to the ALU to addition. So the ALU will receive this 1 in here. Okay. The, so that 1 comes here. And that's a 0 put on simulation you can see so that's a one and that's a zero and it will pass that value straight out okay so now at this point there we've got a one now the reason for doing that is that we're going to pass that value of one into the instruction address register so that it has the next value that we're going to it has the address of the next value that we're going to put out, which will be address number one. Okay, and then the same thing will happen at the end of this little fetch cycle, and it'll be address number two, number three, number four. So we're keeping ahead of the game. Okay, so let's have a look and we'll see how that's working out. So that goes high. Okay, right now, see what else is high. So the instruction address register is enabled as well, so we already know that. No, that's instruction address register is enabled on to the bus. And what else is set here? We have the sets at this side. So the memory address register has been set, and also the accumulator has set, at least it will be, whenever it gets the clock set. Okay, so let's just do that now. So we've got the CPU. And it'll get the clock set okay with the next pulse. So there you go, that's the clock set. So the clock set has gone in the next pulse. We've got these two sets here, so that's the memory address register and the accumulator. So I go in the CPU, and what's happened is it's the accumulator will have taken that value of one and it'll hold it inside. Now that accumulator in effect is sometimes you'll see it, it'll be called a program counter, okay. So we're holding the value of 1 in that little register, okay? So that's the point there. So we're holding that value of 1 in the register. Now, what else was happening here? We're setting the memory address register, okay? So the memory address register, okay, is set. Okay, and it's set by, and it's the set will pass on the value that's on the bus. Well, the value that's on the bus is the instruction address register value, which is zero. Okay, so we've passed that zero into the memory address register. So that means we get in the memory address register. Now, you won't quite be able to see this because it's, I can't get it, if I get it small enough, you might not actually see the colours, but I'll, I'll uh, you can see the mouse here anyway, so it turns out that, it, so I set the address at zero, and that's been passed in because the set has gone high on this register. So it's gone in here, and it's picked out the first column, or so you could say the last column, okay? So it's picked out the, the rightmost column, and it's also picked out the very first row. So it's picked out that very first memory address, okay? Now, it's been kind of nobbled a bit because I've put a 1 in that, okay? 
So I've just forced it to 1 via, well actually I've not actually done it uh, yet have I, let's have it, see if it will be possible to get time to do this. Let's see, we'll ask in here now, um, am I too far along the, if I set this to values to 1, okay. Again this is just me kind of nobbling it to get it working um, because we don't have all the functions available at the moment within the control section okay so let's have a look and see that's me hopefully novel that so that the value in here will be one okay so we're setting that value at one in that very first register okay but that value one won't be set in any of the rest of the registers okay because the the vertical and horizontal line which is defined by the address here zero 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 isn't chosen it's only chosen in that one okay so let's go back to the control section and we can see that we're we're here and we've covered those two the memory address and accumulator is set now when we move on to the next cycle, so we'll move on to the next cycle that get to two, so let's just do that now. I don't know why I miss any of these out, let's see. Right, okay, so I'll not have moved yet. Okay, that's just unsetting these, okay, so it retains all the values. Okay, now there's nothing happening at that part of the cycle. Okay, so this is us now and the second part of the cycle so that's the second part here now what we've done is we've enabled the ram so we've passed the value that's on the ram onto the the bus and we're going to set it in the instruction register so the value of the the ram okay so the ram's been enabled so we've enabled the RAM onto the bus and of course what we've enabled onto the bus is the value that's inside this memory location okay so just drop in that and I'll make it a bit bigger so we can see okay so we're choosing this cell here that's the choice we've enabled the value that's on this memory location and we've enabled it on to the the bus okay um, I can just get in there to show you where everything is there so that's the enable and we've enabled what's in this part here onto the bus okay so now we've got all ones because that's what we put in all ones on the bus so that's the contents of that memory address zero now we're on the bus and the question is what we're we going to do with it well the whole point of it is we take that information that's in that memory address and we put it into instruction register okay now the instruction register goes into the control section so that's what will happen whenever we set whenever the clock set comes on so when the clock set comes on the instruction register set will set okay all right so we'll just do that so when that clock set comes on which is just there, instruction register will go to set, so that value 111 will pass into the control section. So there it is there, 1111 in the control section. Of course, we're not doing anything with this 1111 at the moment because we haven't built any functionality in here. All we've done is hardwired it for the fetch, but in the next videos, we'll be building other sections in here four five and six okay and other parts in here which will take this instruction and instructions will have particular values that will tell it to go and do something okay but that'll become apparent whenever we go into the next video okay so that's us going through the first two okay so you can see when we go into the third one what it's going to do is it's going to enable the accumulator 
right so it will pass the value of the accumulator so remember the accumulator has got a new value for our address which is value 1 so it will enable that onto the bus and also it will put it in the instruction address register so that's the address of the next instruction that we're going to execute so if I go into the CPU and we just get through that let's see one okay so it'll be in the next one there you go so it's taken it's enabled the accumulator and it's put the value of the accumulator which is the one onto the bus okay so that value will go onto the bus and it will then get into instruction address register which will be via the set of course I've nobbled that as I showed you before but you'll see that will actually go green okay so that would have set it in this instruction address register so let's just see that okay so whenever the clock set goes high the instruction address register will be um, set okay so let's go back here so we're looking at clock set which is the next clock pulse there we go so the instruction address register um, is, is now set I don't quite see that because of the, the size of the um, this here uh, you can actually see if I, I can again I can put a wire in and then you'll be able to see the wire gone green okay so see, you see that wire actually gone green so that would be green in there and it would be setting it and it would be setting it to one so one would be the next value of next address that we would go and pull the value from in here and we can continue along just to finish that off so if I get into CP into the control section so that's us finished that there so once we get to 7 I'll come back to 1 now we're, no, we're, we're moving her back to 1 because this bus will come on okay so let's just go and do that just now so we'll go so we're looking for this bus here to go high There it goes. So that's us back to start, back to one here. So just as a part of the simulation, I could then load up the other, the next memory address. I could load it up with some other value. So I could load it up with uh, zero, 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 zero. Okay, and I could go through the same fetch, uh, fetch cycle again. Okay, and it will fetch a different lot, so I can just click in here, and it will work its way through. There, that's it's picked up the value, the this value here. Okay, um, and it works through the cycle again, and it add, puts a one in to the accumulator again. It adds one in accumulator, and you'll see the position here. Three, four, six. So that that's it. Worked through the same process again, okay. And we could just continue through that process, okay. So uh, I've done in effect two of them there. So that gives you an idea of the the fetch section, okay. So that's all there is for this one, and uh, we'll move on to some other um, parts of the control section in the next video. Okay. Goodbye.